All right, we're going to go ahead and start unit one, topic three. Uh, topic three is really going to be a beast of a topic. We're talking about different types of regimes, and then we're going to move into actual constitutional history of the United States, um, which is something I've been looking forward to, is talking specifically about the United States for quite some time. Uh, but in this video, we're probably only going to really get through democracy, um, so, let's not hesitate. What is democracy? Uh, democracy actually means a lot of different things, and you're going to see that the definition of democracy isn't as simple as government by the people. There's a lot of nuances that come along with the term democracy. Um, but in general, the word democracy is considered a good thing and non-democratic is considered bad. Um, a basic definition is political power is exercised either directly or indirectly like through representatives that we elect um, and we participate and there's competition amongst people who would like to be in the government and there's liberties, uh, freedoms like freedom of the press, freedom of speech. Um, the thing is, is that not even really political theorists can agree on an exact definition, and it's kind of more of a spectrum. So democracy definitely isn't static. And there's been points in United States history where we've had more a, a higher level of democracy than others. So we're going to break down all of those nuances in the next 13 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple of different definitions. Um, so, in democracy um, is a political system in which citizens enjoy basic civil and political rights. So that would be like freedom of speech, freedom of press. Um, and their most important political leaders are elected in free elections and fair elections. You are not coerced to vote. Um, you do not have to pay to vote. You have a lot of choices of who you can vote for. And once those people are in office, those people are accountable to a rule of law like our Constitution. Um, another definition is democracy is a regime type that involves picking the government officials through, again, free and fair elections, a balance and protection of majority rule, but not allowing the majority to pounce on the rights of the minority. Um, and in this case, minority isn't necessarily a racial minority. Minority can be you just have an opinion that doesn't match with the majority's opinion. Like if the majority of your country's favorite color is blue and you're in the minority of people who like orange, the blue people cannot force you to wear blue and have your house painted blue and all of your furniture be blue. Your rights as an orange color lover are protected. Okay. And there is constitutional limitations on government action. So like our Bill of Rights prevents the government from treating us a certain way certain ways. Um, here's the key. There is no guarantee that democracies will grant human rights and civil liberties to all people. Um, democracies are supposed to find a balance between the majority and the minority. Okay. So just because you don't think something's fair doesn't mean that it's not democratic. There are two types of democracies. There are representative democracies, and representative democracies, this definition right here, you choose people to represent you in Washington, D.C., or in Richmond, and they make laws on your behalf. Uh, another type of democracy is direct democracy, and this is when you get to make the laws yourself. An example of that is a referendum. Maybe the state will put on the ballot um, a question posed to the voters like, should we allow for same-sex marriage? And then the people will get to choose yes or no. Um, or the Brexit vote, when Britain vote, um, well, when the British citizens voted to exit the European Union. The British government posed that question to the people, and the people voted directly to make that choice, the Brexit vote. 
significant. The one thing that political scientists can agree on is that there are some clear characteristics of democracy. Um, the first and really key characteristic of democracy is that there is going to be free and fair elections. Um, here are the components of a free and fair election. There are multiple parties to choose from. So you're not just choosing from one party, one candidate. Like, here's my ballot. I get one person to vote for. Hitler. Ho! Oh. Yeah. No, that's not a free and fair election. So uh, there is criticism in the United States that we only have two parties to choose from and two candidates to choose from, but the choice still is there. Um, and that's not a commentary on that, I think, whether or not I think two parties are enough or anything like that. It's just we do have a choice. Um, the information um, about the candidates and the party's platform or stance on the issues is out there for the education of the electorate. So the people have the ability to know what Hillary Clinton stands for and what Donald Trump stands for. Um, now, whether or not they actually use that information to make an educated choice on Election Day is a different matter, but nonetheless, the information is out there. Um, you can vote without obstacles and everyone's vote counts equally. So you can vote without having to worry about paying a, uh, a poll tax. You can vote. Some people would argue that showing a government issued ID or a an ID of any sort is actually an obstacle to voting because not everybody has an ID. And Unfortunately, people who don't have IDs are commonly people on the lower end of the socioeconomic ladder. And unfortunately, in the United States, people that are lower on that ladder have tend to be minorities and younger people, and minorities and younger people tend to vote Democratic. So that's why the issue with having to present a voter ID is being questioned in courts is because that can be argued as presenting an obstacle to voting. And the candidate with the most votes wins. And then once they get into office, their orders and their powers are able to be executed. So nobody tries to block them because they don't like them. So if Donald Trump, you don't like Donald Trump, Donald and Congress doesn't get along with Donald Trump, but Donald Trump becomes president, Congress can't step on his powers they can check him because they check his imbalances, um, but he is able to govern as per the powers given to him in the Constitution. Okay, so free and fair elections. Um, the election of 2000 was an interesting election um, because if you were to add up the total number of people, uh, the total number of votes, excuse me, throughout the entire country, um, the popular vote actually went to Al Gore, okay? Um, if you were to, and Al Gore, I hate this, is actually represented in red because normally we associate red with Republican and blue with Democrat, but it's opposite on this map. And then, um, however, Al Gore was unable to secure the right combination of electoral college votes throughout the country. Therefore, Bush won, even though if you were to total up the popular vote, Gore won that. So I guess the question would be, um, given things like the election of 2000, the fact that we have a two-party system, the fact that we have voter ID laws, um, the fact that uh, checks and balances often tries to stop a president from executing his orders, um, do we have a true democracy in the United States? All right, uh, characteristics of democracy continued. This is where the United States really is hurting, um, or hurting, is civic participation. Um, a key element or characteristic of democracy is that the people participate in the government. Um, they have their voice heard. They try to give input or demands to their politician or to their um, representatives. Um, they'll protest, they'll campaign, and when it comes down to it, they'll vote. Um, and we don't have that great of um, voter turnout in this country. Um, we'll have a civil society um, where groups of people choose to join uh, an interest group, put in the groups, 
the groups people choose to join in order to express their interest. So, um, for example, you would join the NRA if you were about preserving your right to bear arms and gun rights and you wanted to uphold the Second Amendment. Um, that's We have a society that allows you to join freely and assemble freely into groups and then have that group's opinion expressed. Um, you could petition the government. Again, that goes along with the association autonomy. Um, you are able to speak freely. So, um, to kind of close the loop, um, one of the closing the loop meaning to pull it all together. Um, in a healthy democracy, policymaking institutions are influenced by interest groups in a civil society. All right, there are a couple of ways to look at democracy. So there's some theories that people hold when it comes to um, the way democracies work. And you should be familiar with some of these because they were on your vocab test and they were part of your vocabulary words from the summer. Um, the first theory is pluralist theory. If you um, believe in pluralist theory, what you are saying is basically there are various groups of people that have differing opinions in the United States or different opinions in the political system, and it's okay um, for there to be various demands and various opinions um, because then that means the representatives will be able to make laws that reflect the will of the majority and representatives will have a better understanding about the, the demands and the needs of the people. Okay, so having a bunch of different interest groups is a good thing. Um, Hyperpluralism, kind of take it one step further. So, okay. But look at the little smiley face. See, I forgot about that guy. See how happy he is? He's pluralist theory. He's like, this is positive. Pluralism's positive. You have a positive effect on um, government. Okay. Hyperpluralism, just think about maybe your little brother or sister that is super off the wall when they're like four or five. You know, they're jumping on the couch, they're running through the hallway. I mean, they're all over the place. And they can't seem to focus or get one thing accomplished, all right, because they're super hyper. Um, Hyperpluralism works the same way. You have too much going on. You have too many groups with too many conflicting opinions. And the result is gridlock. Gridlock is when you're not moving. You're not getting anywhere. Think about gridlock traffic. Um, you're not moving. So if you have hyperpluralism, there's too much going on. Nobody has one focus. Representatives don't know who to listen to and it results in gridlock. Um, and then the last characteristic or the last theory of democracy um, is class elitism and this is the idea that the wealthy one percent of all people um, are the ones who influence the government the most. Okay I just realized this and you're gonna kill me. There's one more character there's another characteristic of democracy slide so we had free and fair elections we had participation, civic participation, and then I accidentally threw in those theories of democracy, and now there's one more characteristic of democracy slide. So you got to kind of go back to the original list. And no, I'm not going to re-record this. Okay, the last, the last few characteristics of democracy are the protection of human rights, kind of talked about majority rules, but the rights of all people, including the minority, are protected, um, and the rule of law, the government actions are restrained by a constitution, so like I've said before in class, even if somebody who you don't like becomes president, remember their actions are constrained by checks and balances within the constitution. Um, examples of rule of law would be um, a bill of rights, so the government can't take away those rights from you, and like the freedom of speech, freedom of press, the right to due process of law, um, the right to be free from cruel and unusual punishment and a fair trial, and even way basic, um, the Magna Carta, where kings, you know, or a leader of a government has rules that they have to follow. They can't, they can't break these rules or the people will revolt against them or, in our case, um, 
Congress can move to try to impeach him. Okay, um, we got some